This is wild motherfuckers! Well, hello there from the freezing ass down south. Dude, so apparently I saw the jet stream and it wrapped all the way down across the country, right? And so it looks like a horseshoe. And one of my first thoughts is that it's about to be fucking cold down in thrill uh, country. How is it, man? Yeah, no, no, it, it was uh, it was bad all day. I mean, it was high thirty four. Wind was howling. Uh, they closed I ten, which never happens unless you know you have a flood or something like that. They closed the whole interstate, and uh, yeah, so I've just been you know parked here at the house, and uh, you know. We tried to log on here a minute ago, and you and I were having freezing up issues and all that. And I had to completely get out and restart the computer, everything, and then finally come back on. So, all right. So, basically, this if you're watching live on No Filter Network, thanks for joining us. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, Caffeine TV, Fubo, wherever, if it gets glitchy with the video, understand this we're just going to continue to charge on as long as the audio is okay if the audio starts sucking ass and we'll cut this thing short but thrill let's get right into it man dusty baker hired by the san francisco giants as a special assistant you sent me the news late last night your thoughts oh god my man he's back he's back not only you know was my hitting instructor for five years uh was my man during 93 uh is at the helm for the Giants, for a lot of a lot of really good teams, a lot of really good, fun stuff in San Francisco. Uh, he ushered in the, the new ballpark after being in Candlestick for so long, and you know goes, you know to, to several different places. Winds up winning the World Series with Houston. Uh, is in the playoffs again with Houston last year, and winds up losing to the eventual World Champion Rangers. And you know, man, I'm I'm loving having my 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 bud back in the. Uh, in the fold and uh you know the sacramento guy uh, i don't know what his exactly what his um you know link is going to be but uh you know i i talked to him, uh yesterday and he was all fired up so all right dude so let's rehash the fight in st louis because you've told me this before ah. the first guy to run out there. I always thought it was Candy Maldonado, but it wasn't. It was Dusty fucking Baker. Everybody thinks that, you know, Candy Maldonado is the one that came through there and cleaned house, which which he wound up doing. He he hit Ozzy. But uh, if you guys ever go on YouTube and pull up that video, first guy in the pile, number 12, Dusty Baker. He comes in right on top of me. And that was your hitting coach at the time, though. It wasn't even like he was a player. Yeah, no, he was my hitting coach, and then he was also the first base coach. So how he got over there pretty quick was because I think he, I I told him I, I told him at first base I said I said dude I'm gonna go get somebody. He said go get him. So I was like all right, and uh, that's what happened. Explain the relationship between a hitting coach and a player, and the importance of it. The importance is, you know, he's going to try to get you to do something and he's coming at it from a veteran standpoint and somebody's passed it down to him and he wants you to try something. It's your job as a hitter to at least try it out. And, you know, if you look at Dusty's pedigree, I mean, he was a rookie with Hank Aaron. So who the hell you think's telling Dusty Baker how to hit and stuff like that, except like the greatest, one of the greatest there ever was. So, you know, if Dusty, you know, gave me a tip, he and I were in the batting case. I always tried it. I mean, I tried it every time. You and their game, some of it, it didn't fit. It, it, it was uncomfortable. And so, you know, and Dusty, uh, you know, uh, for lack of a term, you know, kind of modified my swing. Everything sort of took off from there. When was it when you, you had the rock back, right? You were here, and then there was a lot of movement back. 
Right. And then later on, you just started back. Is is was that the yeah. big adjustment that you made? That was the big adjustment, and that happened in between '88 and '89 because you know we had our end of the year, I guess you want to say like like meeting, and my general manager was Al Rosen, and you know I'm I had 29 homers that year, and uh, I led the NL and RBIs with 116, and. The first, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to get a little pat on the back. First thing he tells me is he said, you're going to change your swing. I go, excuse me? He goes, yeah. He goes, you know, you were my three-hole hitter, and and he he dropped a number on me. I don't even remember what it was, like 15, 17 uh, double play balls. He said, if you're going to be my number three-hole hitter, he said, you ain't hitting in all them double plays and taking us out of big innings. And when he said that, a lot of people would just sit there and uh, – They'll be like, oh, what the hell? What the hell? I actually took it as constructive criticism. And I'm like, you goddamn right. Because if I do my job, I'm going to set up, you know, Kevin Mitchell behind me who can drive in more runs. Matt Williams can drive in more runs. Whoever the six hole hitter is. And, uh, you know, I took it as constructive criticism, changed the swing around, had my best year ever that next year. Dude, it's really one of those things that. If you're not willing to change and you're and you think you have all the answers, you're fucking done in this game. It, Yo, it, it, it'll, yes. it, it'll bury you, man. Yes, so without a without a shadow of a doubt. And you know it, you know it just as good as anybody. I mean, you know, you gotta I don't want to say you gotta tinker. You don't have to tinker all the time, but if if you know you're on a roll, you're on a roll, and then all of a sudden you pull in a 0 for 15, it's like Hey, what the hell just happened here? What? How did I get out of whack to where I'm 0 for 15 now, not making any contact at all? And so, this is they call it a game of adjustments. It's the truth, man. It's the truth. So the San Francisco Giants thrill signed Jordan Hicks, a reliever from you know I, I forget who he was with. I mean, where the St. Louis originally came up with. He's right. A, he's a fireballer, man. He throws damn near 100 miles per hour, over yeah. 100 miles per hour, yeah. a, actually. And he throws these bowling yeah. ball sinkers. He doesn't have a ton of swing and miss. And it was really interesting for as hard as he throws. It just hasn't really added up. But he added the sweeper into his uh, arsenal last season and got started getting a lot more swings and misses. And the Giants have signed him. As a starter, yeah. I mean, I you know how 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 do you anticipate this working out? Uh, you know that's that's the one thing he um you know I know he's another guy that had you know an injury and had surgery and came back throwing harder and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know I would anticipate that if he's going to be a starter, he's not going to be throwing a hundred. That's first off because he's going to have to go a little further in the game. Um, but. His repertoire plays real well into our ballpark. I mean, sinker baller with a sweeper and a slider, you know, a four-seamer, um, that really works well in our ballpark. I mean, you can keep the ball on the ground, or if you climb the ladder, you get the strikeouts. So that that's going to be really interesting to see is, you know, kind of what happens with Jordan Hicks. Another guy you and I didn't even get a chance to talk about is Robbie Ray. You know, I mean, you know, oh, a year or yeah. two, a year or two removed from winning a, a Cy Young, he's got Tommy John surgery. He's not going to be back till at least probably the All Star break, maybe even after. But you know, Farhan's taking the take a gamble on him and see. And be, look, um, he come back to his old old form. And uh, you know, in order to get Robbie Ray, we had to give up. You know, Hanniger, your your buddy. And uh, D. Scalfani, who's been hurt two years in a row. So, you know, it's kind of – we gave up some guys that got hurt to get a guy that's hurt. And, you know, trying to see if he can return back to his Cy uh, Young form. So, Jordan Hicks, four-year, $44 million contract. He's only 27 years old. I mean, this is a I, – I really like this signing basically because, in my opinion, if he does – end up being this dominant starter the Giants way underpaid dude yeah no you're right 
You're right. And, you know, you, you keep your fingers crossed. Um, you know, the Giants have picked up a few other guys, too. Uh, I know today or yesterday, whatever it was, they picked up a kid by the name of Cooper Hummel. Uh, looks like he's kind of a utility guy, probably a triple-A fill-in. Uh, we picked up another guy. Uh, let me see. Let me see what his name was. And he's also probably going to be a, a triple-A fill-in. So, uh, you know, they're just trying to plug in, plug in some parts, you know? Yeah, so it's saying here, they're, talk, they're talking about Hicks, right? And it says, why would they give Hicks a chance to start? Um, it it kind of goes into him talking about him not getting a fair shot when he was in St. Louis. And then it says, then there's the fact that the Giants rotation wasn't overflowing with reliable options, especially early in the season. Alex Cobb and the newly acquired Robbie Ray will start 2024 on the injured list. I mean, that's, you know, DeSclafani, they sent to Seattle. A lot going will be riding on unproven young pitchers, such as prospects Kyle Harrison and Keaton Wynn. What do you know about Keaton Wynn? Uh, Keaton, uh, big talk, 6'4", 6'5". He's been in the minor leagues with us for a while. Uh, He can run it up there. I mean, he's a nice guy. Um, You know, he has had some injuries in the past, but if, you know, if he stays healthy – uh, he's got a chance to be a good one. That's the same thing. Uh, you know, everybody got a chance to see a little bit of Tristan Beck last year. He and mm-hmm. Keaton Wynn are, are, uh, kind of what and what you ask me. So. Yeah. I, I like Beck from Stanford. I, I actually called his games down on the farm, uh, years back. So yeah. Yeah. look, they're going to have to find lightning in a bottle if they want to yeah. compete in the West. It, it's going to be a, nasty division obviously the dodge is the dodgers and everybody else there's no fucking secret when it comes to that but one of the guys still on the market thrill and we keep hearing his name over and over but it's gotten really quiet as of late it's a bit disconcerting for me and that's blake snell and so yeah Yeah. hey thrill as as snell's name is really you know, it's, it's still out there, obviously. The Yankees made him an offer, and it's the number one free agent, in my opinion, still left. Well, I got a text message today in uh, – it was actually on Instagram from Blake fucking Snell. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Snelly. Get on the horn, to EB. How about well, that? you crazy to say, man. This guy's got nasty stuff. I mean, nasty stuff. And people talk about, oh, he's got like walks and he's got he's got that. When you get up to like this, this is no fun whatsoever. This is this is you better bring your A game because he's got a game coming at you. So hey, yeah, uh, while I'm thinking about it, while I'm thinking about it, you know, um, we've got some some new people pop up in the chat room here. Uh Marty. Is in there. Uh, Victoria is a newbie. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Jason hadn't seen Jason in a while, and uh, so man, so it's it's fun. But Victoria wants to see my shirt, so it says, "I have selected hearing." Uh, sorry, you were not selected. So there you go. I there like you go. that. One of them stupid shirts you wear around, people like stare at you, like, "What the hell is this guy doing?" So. You never disappoint. <laughs> <with the shirt. laughs> Gotta have some fun. Gotta have some fun. How how so? How was uh? How was the past few weeks? I mean, we didn't have you. We didn't have you on last week. Yeah. I guess I'm trying to think. Have we, have we been on since the new year? Uh, I don't think we have. Well, yeah, we had. No, yeah, two, we, weeks. Two, week, two weeks ago we were. Yeah, and it's the yeah. fifth. I, I think we came on right after the new year. Um, so what? As far as like double deuces ranch, this time of year when it's that cold out, bro, like you're not, oh, you're, not rolling, you're not rolling out there and going killing shit, are you? Well, I'm not. I'm not up there, but I've been. I've been messing around here in Rouge area. I got a, I got two real good ones here in the last week and a half or so. So they're starting to run around with this cold weather, but. Uh, Right now it's yeah oh hell I don't even know what it is there probably it's probably fifteen degrees up there 
and one of my buddies is up there making sure everything's up. So, hey, what about last week? You were at the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame banquet. I imagine you've already yeah. been inducted. So you were there just as a member yeah. of it? Well, I was I was there as a member of it. And then uh, it was it was kind of a little tribute to LSU and them winning the national championship, all that sort of stuff. But then they had uh, Roger Clemens uh, was was like the featured guest. And so, you know, Roger and I go way back. We, you know, we we I tell you stories about Roger all the time. But, you know, he and I. You know, just two really good competitors. We got to be friends. And uh, so I had a chance to visit with him about 15, 20 minutes. And he's a grandpa now. Uh, he's got two great kids. Uh, his, you know, his kids play ball. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's doing the Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah, I got inducted. Oh, shoot, I don't, I don't even know when. Maybe 06, 07, somewhere around there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, – Anytime you do some sort of baseball around here, I, I usually get invited to it. So, Roger Clemens, give me a little insight or give the people here on Deuces Wild a little insight to what he's like as a human being. Well, I mean, he's a he's a normal dude, you know, just like just like everybody else, but just one of the most intense competitors you're going to face. I mean, there was no fooling around when he was on the mound. He was straight straight business and uh you know it's it was good you know to see him at the banquet and see him you know in a relaxed setting you know because i was never his teammate so i never saw him in a relaxed setting i always saw him when he had the a game on and uh you know i mean he's he's that guy you know i mean we just talked about it with blake snell he's that guy man when you walk up to home plate you had better bring your best because he's coming at you with his best and you better jump on what he, whatever he doesn't make a mistake with. I busted his ass, man. I got him in Arizona. Fucking bomb. Look at you. Go, baby. Go. I mean, I, whenever we could celebrate me, it's, I think we should. I, oh, I look, hey. man, Let's I didn't celebrate take, it. Let's celebrate it. I didn't take Nolan Ryan deep in, um, in, my, in my first at bat in the big leagues. <laughs> it's still one of the most epic stories, I think, ever uh, it, when it comes to a debut. But – I wonder how many how many pitchers, and this would be something for Luker. I, I imagine you took Roger Clemens deep at some point in your career. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Yes, I got him. I got him a few times. I got him. I got him once or twice with Boston. I got him once or twice with the Yankees. And so the God, I don't know about when he was with Toronto. When he was on Toronto, he was on a freaking roll. Not not many people got him in. So. So the I think the question becomes this. I hit 109 home runs in my career. You hit 300 and what? No, almost 300. I was a little shy of 300. Okay, so so basically you hit 300. I of the of the 300 that you hit and the 109 that I hit. How many were off the same guy? That is a oh, wow. Stephen Luker question. That would be a Stephen Luker question. You know what? If if you go on and you know this is People in the uh, chat room, y'all can look too. There's a there's a website. And I want to say it's like baseball reference, reference stat or something like that. And if you scroll down, I mean, it'll say you know who you hit homers off of, and you click on it. And one day, one day, I was like, all right, let me click on it. And I, I clicked on it, and I, I had I got it, I got the whole list, and I printed it out. It was like three pages long. I was like, oh, this is cool. I got a chance to a chance to look and see and then i was like i wonder who that guy is you know i wonder who that guy is i forgot i forgot some of the dudes I, it's funny because i did the same thing not too long ago and every one of them i remember and it, it, it was like it didn't if you were you were to ask me right now start listing them there's no chance but when i look at it and i'll, I'll give you an example um i i against texas it was it was at in arlington it was uh naren i think it was like jerry naren's i want to say nephew and he got called to the big leagues and, and i ran into him years later and he literally was up in the big leagues for i want to say one start for his entire career and i got him fucking twice in that one start 
one oppo taco and another bomb deep to left field, man. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, yeah, thanks for ruining my big league career. <laughs> Quit throwing the crap over the middle of the plate. You won't have that problem. Oh, I hear you. All right, Thrill. I have uh, the order of business here. I find this really interesting. It's, a, it's an article that talks about the five resolutions the Giants need for the new year. I, I'm going to rip through one. The first one, score more runs for Webb, right? Uh, yeah. Offense is, is something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. The second one, add to the front of the rotation. We haven't done that yet. Giants have not done that yet. They've added to the back of the rotation, but certainly I guess you could say Robbie Ray if he comes back and he's healthy and everything else, but you didn't add to the front of the rotation in the immediate when it starts. Number three is clean up the defense. Uh, that, that was a, a huge problem as of last season. Let's see here. Uh, the Giants have tried to prioritize offense over defense in recent years, but that approach largely backfired. They led the majors with 117 fucking airs, Thrill. What's up with that? That ain't good. It ain't good. Put it this way. You know, if you're a, if you're a pitcher, you know, and, and and you make them put the ball on the ground and it, the play doesn't get made, you just, you just sit there and just shake your head. It's like beating your head against the wall. And, you know, especially with Logan Webb. Logan Webb, single baller. Now we got Hicks. He's a single baller. Um, you know, you got uh, you got Cobb, who's the the split finger dude. You know, so I mean, there's going to be a ton of balls on the ground. You, you, we're going to make make some plays, and that was the one thing that when I talked to Matt Williams, he stressed. He goes, he goes, thrill. He goes, we will catch the baseball, and he said, won't be from a lack of taking ground balls. He said, he said, we will be. A number one taking ground balls every day. And, you know, he and I had a big discussion about, you know, I was not happy at the work ethic, you know, and how many ground balls people were taking, how many, you know, bat and practice swings they would get out on the field. And uh, he literally told me, he said, Thrill, he said, that problem will be addressed. So there you go. Okay. The MLB high ground ball rate was owned by. Your San Francisco Giants, 48.7% last year. So essentially, that was a perfect storm, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, look, I mean, you got you got those guys. You got, you know, Tyler Rogers throwing from down under. You know, so, I mean, there's going to be balls on the ground. And the one thing, and, and I learned this, you know, pretty quick, you know, with, with my infield instructor, who was Bob Lillis. You know, he goes, look, the guys on my staff back then, if they weren't sinker balls, they threw the split. So he said, you better, you know, especially if you see that, you know, wiggle or, you know, you see the breaking ball down or you see the split coming or whatever. He said, you anticipate that ball getting after you. And, uh, you know, I mean, when you are ready to make a play, you generally play the ball really well and you don't boot it. It's when you sit back on your heels, you don't expect the ball, all of a sudden it surprises you, and all of a sudden it's an error. So, you know, another thing, too, you know, you even said it. Uh, with Hanger gone, you know, uh, we got kind of a gap as far as, like, power goes. Uh, you know, Conforto, I think he's going to hit a bunch. Uh, Wade has a chance to hit, you know, but everybody else needs to have to – pick up the hitting prowess a little bit more as well. Yeah, I, th I think when it comes to home runs, and you've seen this with some of the teams recently that have led the league in homers, I think about Minnesota a couple years ago. I, dude, it's about the depth. You don't, yeah. need one, you don't need one guy to hit 50, but you need a bunch of guys to hit 20. And if you could yeah, do exactly. that, you could have, I don't know, say in that Giants lineup, if you could get seven, eight guys – hitting 20 now you know we're on to something the yeah. other thing the other thing thrill it says here uh it talks about being more aggressive on the base pass this is this is interesting base dealers had an all-time best 80.2 percent success rate this past season but the giants failed to capitalize on the new rules 
that were meant to promote more action on the base pass. They finished last in the majors with 57 stolen bases, 16 fewer than Ronald Acuna Jr. single-handedly swiped for the Braves in 2023. What the fuck, man? Yeah, no, no. You know, I'm I'm a big, I'm a big, aggressive guy. I know you are. That's the way you played. That's the way I played. I have no problems, absolutely none, with starting runners. I got no problems with. A, matter of fact, if anything, I I even went up to some of my managers. I'm like, get them going. I said, if I catch him out the corner of my eye running. I said, I know I got middle infielders that are going to be moving, and you know I can go the other way, whatever you might be. Um, I got Cal Ripken twice on that. Um, when I was in Texas. I told Johnny Oates. I said, second pitch. I said second pitch, not first pitch. I said second pitch. I said send a runner. I said put him. And then what I'll do is I'll hit, I'll put a hit on him. Cal's going to cover because he always wanted to cover. And sure enough, two times in a row. I got base hits the other way, and we went first and third on hit and runs because I was taking advantage of Cal Ripken because I knew he was covering second. So, so the, the thing that I like to do, Thrill, with our let them play teams is I want to start the runners, but I tell the batter, I don't ever want you guys taking the pitch. If you have a pitch to drive, I want you guys going after it. Now, if it's a ball, take a ball. And I have that much confidence that our guy is going to steal the bag. But this turns into a simple math equation. Why, when we have the opportunity, say, to put one in the gap in advance, say, for the runner at first, right? There's 90 feet. Then there's another 90 feet. There's 180 feet. Say he goes first to third. And then you're adding another 90 feet, which makes it 270 on the guy that just got the base hit, as opposed to just taking the pitch to get 90 feet, and that's it. Yeah, no. No, and, that, it, and it's, you know, that's without a shadow of a doubt. I, I love it. And on top of that, you know, by running, you're putting pressure on the, on the defense. I mean, you're making guys move around, making, you know, the, they're, they're moving before the ball even hit, and so they're going to be out of position. So, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff running around like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, for me personally, as far as the Giants go, there, there was uh, – there was some there were some problems last year. I think that they're going to be addressed. Uh, I know Matt. I know I know how he likes to work, and he'll have he'll have guys you know balls to the wall. So that'll be good. Um, everybody in the chat room right now is chunking up some of my stats against guys and all that sort of stuff. There's one dude. Uh, Art even brought it up. It's uh, Julio Santana. Julio was one of my teammates in Texas, and. Uh, I told Julio, I'm like, Julio, you have got to stop throwing sliders in these counts. I said, everybody knows it's coming. I said, stop it. And he, uh, but, man, that's that's my best pitch. I said, well, you got to throw a fastball every now and then. You can't throw a slider every time you get 1-0, 2-1, 3-1. I said, guys are going to start sitting on you. So the next year, believe it or not, he gets traded. And, you know, Art even brought it up. I was 8 for 8 off of Julio. And out of the eight for eight, seven of them were off of sliders. And I'm like, here comes this idiot throwing me sliders again. Whack! Here comes another slider. Whack! Here comes another slider. Whack! I'm on first base and I'm screaming at him. Yes, dumb motherfucker, I told you to stop throwing sliders. I'm going to look for a slider next time, too, you idiot. Come on, man. Swear to God. Swear to God, he's a freaking moron. What? What did he say? Oh, uh, he's 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 such an idiot. He was such an idiot. I mean, I go in there to face him in Montreal. I was in first pitch slider. What? I get on first base, and uh, whoever the first baseman was, I, you know, if this guy stays in there, I say, he's gonna throw me another slider next at bat. Be down here again. Bring him next at bat. Slider. Whack. Here I am down at first base again. Like, you dummy. Oh, it's incredible. All oh, right, yeah. I got a I got a question for you. There's an article here on Reggie Crawford, the Giants' number eight prospect, according to MLB Pipeline. He's one of the more unique players of the game. The minor leaguer is a legitimate two-way player. He hits towering home runs at the plate, and he's got a 100-mile-per-hour fastball 
on the mound. He's already in some circles drawing comparisons of baseball's resident unicorn, Shohei Otani. I, what do we know about Reggie Crawford? And how is he only right. the number eight prospect if he throws 100 and hits a ball 500 feet? So here's the thing. All right. Reggie Crawford got was our number one uh, uh I want to say maybe two years ago. Came out of the University of Connecticut. He was hurt. He had Tommy John surgery. I don't know why we get all these guys with Tommy John surgery. So we had to wait. So he missed that whole season. This last year, he finally comes in, and uh, they had him on pitch. And so he would throw one inning, one inning, one inning. He started in San Jose. He wound up in Eugene. And then, for whatever reason, I don't know why he wasn't hitting, they, uh, they sent him to – the fall league, and I know he hit a little bit. I know he hit a homer uh, in the fall league, but you know, I'm I'm waiting to say, you know kind of turning Reggie Crawford loose. He's a big guy, like six seven, six eight, um, left handed pitcher, uh, left handed hitter, and uh, you know, like I said, to Connecticut. So I'm I'm looking for him to, to cut loose. Another one um, is the uh, the kid we signed last year, our number one pick last year. Uh, you know, he, a uh, big, tall kid, pitcher, hitter, and, uh, you know, he did a lot of hitting. I don't know if he did any pitching. So, um, I, I forget his name, Elgin or Elgin or, but, uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm looking forward to seeing some of these guys in spring training and introducing myself and how healthy yep. they are. And, hey, uh, you got to get a full year in here, dude. You're getting old and you haven't played a freaking full year yet. Yeah, it says uh, uh, the other guy is Bryce Eldridge. Him, yeah, that's him. He struck but out. He actually, he actually had a pretty good like Arizona uh, schedule, and then they bumped him up to San Jose for the playoffs. So he played, he played in, the, in with the San Jose team in the playoffs. He struck out thirty-two batters in just nineteen innings. He recently hit two dingers in an Arizona Fall League action. Okay. Interesting. It says he lights up when interacting with fans on social media, jokes about how he would pitch to himself and even has his own YouTube channel where he shares stories about life in the minors. Oh, lovely. Uh, yeah, you, you need to keep your YouTube channel going, dude. Don't worry about it. Get to the major leagues. In the meantime, worry about freaking hitting and pitching. It's tough. For, it's tough for these kids these days, man. Because you know you want to carry on this persona, right? And but at the same time, I, you know, look, I went through a lot of this when I played. I always had to think about what I was going to do after I was done playing. But at the same time, my my advice to any of these guys would be to focus on on the field shit right now. The problem yeah. is you get to the off season with these guys. And it's interesting. I'm not going to get into the details about it, but that Blake Snell and I were going back and forth on a, a few different things, but these guys have passions outside of just say for Blake Snell pitching. He has other passions in his life that he wants to pursue. And it's, I think it's commendable, but at the same time, when it comes back, you know, down to now Blake Snell is in a little different category. There's a fucking Cy Young award winner, right? He's yeah. not, he's not like grinding to, to get up to the big league. So, yeah, no, no. And, you know, I mean, I get it. I get it. Cause I mean, you know, we've talked about it, you know, a lot, you know I mean? When I stepped off the field at the end of the year, you know, my, my, my brain switched gears and I went into hunting and fishing and all that sort of stuff. And I really didn't think about baseball till January 1st again, but it really wasn't that far away. You know I mean? You know, I was telling you, you know, I'm hunting and fishing and, you know, I'm taking a 13 pound maul and I'm splitting wood. So I'm swinging some sort of way or another, you know, and, and kind of mixes in with, you know, moss season training type of stuff. But, you know, these guys now, I mean, I, and I hate to tell you, I mean, you know, I, I'd come on, I'd come in off the field and usually it took the press about, uh, I think they'd, they'd give us a little bit of a grace period before the press came in. And man, you know, I'd, I'd sit in my locker and, and rehash the game and, and, you know, what I did here and what, 
what could we have done better here? I mean, on and on and on. And now, man, these dudes come off the field. First thing they're doing, they're on that freaking phone and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, did you uh, remember uh, the 2-1 the pitch in your third at bat? How did you miss that one? And, you know, I mean, stuff like that. And they're like, you, like, pay attention to that? I go, yeah, I pay attention to that. That's that's how I can freaking critique myself. That's how I can critique you, you know. And uh, anyway, little stuff like that. Well, thrill. I mean, look, the game's changed. These guys have their iPads readily available for them right there when they get done with their at-bats. The question becomes how much of that becomes paralysis by analysis. And yeah. when we used to just feel something. Oh, um, God. Now I, it, I that, don't, is, is, that, yeah. is, that, is that correct? That is so freaking correct. I mean – there is so much that you need to, in a game, game of baseball, feel. I mean, feel how the bat feels. If I'm grabbing it too tight, if I'm laid it back, whatever it is, feel something. Instead of having to go to a video screen and look at it on, on a computer or look at it on TV. Get in the batter's box and feel it. And the way you do that is you take a lot of swings. And you take a lot of ground balls. Same principle. All right? That's why you and I had that discussion. Dude, you're playing 81 games in Oracle Park. I'm going to take practice every day because I want to see where the ball flies, how the wind affects it, how I feel that day, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, why people couldn't take bat practice is beyond me. And I kind of held my tongue in check uh, last few years because – uh, I was not being listened to, shall we say? But with Bob Melvin and Matt Williams and some of the guys there, oh, I'm I'm not I'm not afraid to speak my mind now. Okay, so next Tuesday they're going to reveal the latest Hall of Fame class. It looks like we will get at least four new members voted into the Hall of Fame with a fifth. And six, right on the cusp. Adrian Beltre right now, as far as the latest tracker is concerned, is leading with a 98.8%. Joe Maurer, 82.5%, looking to become a first ballot Hall of Famer. Todd Helton has 82.5% as well. Billy Wagner, the longtime closer of the New York Mets at 79.5%. And then Thrill. I'm wearing this jersey because I made a video earlier today. I know who you're going to say. I know who you're going to say because we talked about it a few weeks ago. The Gary guy like this. Fucking Sheffield, man. Boom. Boom. There he That's is right there. Famer. Right there like that. Hey, you know what? I mean, that, that list you read off of, you know what I mean? Beltre is without a shadow of doubt. He's going in. Don't worry about it. 3,000 hits. That's that you're a lock for that. But then you and I talked about that. I mean, if you look at his stats, I'm like, how the hell can they not put him in there? Is help. I mean, help not to be in there any day. Maurer, there's arguments for Maurer. There's arguments against Maurer. So, uh, you know, I mean, look, if he makes it great, I'm happy for him. But, you know, Helton, Billy Wagner, Beltre, and then you and I talked about Sheffield. I mean, for a while there, you did not want to face Sheffield. No. And so, so, I mean, those guys should be a lock, in my opinion and in your opinion. I know you're thinking the same way. Yeah, I made a video earlier today because it the baseballer who's a – it's an Instagram account that we collaborate with the No Filter Network. They put out a video of Sheffield's kid. His swing – is fucking identical to his dad. <laughs> I, 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 you can't recreate that. Copy his dad. Copy his dad. That's a good thing, dude. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, dude. Yeah, dude. I, and and as you should, but it's not. I mean, there's. He was he was really wide, and he was just like this. Boom, boom, boom. And they show him hitting uh, a walk off that was just. If I could find it here, a. a I'll show it to you because it, it's it's really just eye-opening, man. Like, it is one of those things where it's like you've seen father-son combos before, but you haven't really 
and here's here was the here was the video. Let me see. Oh, he got that one. Oh, yeah, dude. he got that one. He got it, but you just got to you got to see the setup, the load. Let me see. B S B the baseballer. All right, here we go. Oop. Oop. Yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, you kind of missed it. That's all right. I get, I get the idea. Oh yeah, yeah. He even had the little lean back like his dad too. Yeah, it's 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 so cool to see. I mean, I watched that. I got the chills, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, Hall of Fame. I'm pulling for those guys, man. I hope they, I hope they get it. Uh, you know, when Clemens and I were together, you know, the other day, you know. I told him, dude, I said, you know, I said, Eric Burns and I talk about you a lot. So I've been pulling for you for the hall. You know, he's been pulling for you for the hall. I hope the, I hope the veterans committee when they freaking vote, freaking let his ass in because I mean, you know, you hate to see, you know, guys like Barry, guys like Clemens, you know, who are the best at their freaking craft, you know, held out Pete Rose, same thing. You know, we've you and I have had you and I have had several talks about Pete and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, for for the, the everybody in the chat room, they know it. But for the newbies in the chat room, you know, to beat Pete Rose's record, you got to get 200 hits for 21 straight years. And then you're still about 52 hits shy. Yeah. So, you know, that that's a record that will never be broke. So, I mean, let the dude in the freaking Hall of Fame. You know, in the meantime, in the meantime, we let freaking druggies and stir all that. There's fraud users in the hall of fame right now. I know of three of them for sure, you know, but that yeah, shit happens. Yeah, it, Amo's on here in the chat. And by the way, if you're joining us on No Filter Network, you want to fire away the chat, go ahead. This then gets reposted to uh, Apple, Spotify. If you uh, are liking the show, if you can leave a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. Five stars if you you're feeling generous. Amo is uh, saying Andrew Jones. And yeah, we, we had that argument too. You and I, we looked up Andrew's uh, stats, and believe it or not, I mean, you know, he's got a lot of homers. Um, he's got RBIs, all that sort of stuff. He's really lacking in batting average, though. He's like, I don't know. 250 something, 260, something like that, you know. So that's the one thing kind of dragged him down. But I mean, you know, if, if you look at if you look at you know the dude that we're talking about, the Heltons and the and, uh you know Beltrays and uh you know Sheffields, I mean, go back and look at their stats and look at how many hundred RBI years. It's like stupid. You know, so like that they're they're the next level above Andrew. And even though even though Mo, you know, he, he freaking lives in Breeze Braves, but I, I'm sorry, I can't let Andrew in this year. Maybe we'll see what happens down the road. Yeah, the question just becomes, what do we do with the steroid users? What do we do with Bonds? What do we do with Clemens? What do you do with, uh, you know, Gary Sheffield was tied to the Balco thing, but then yeah. Gary Sheffield's obviously like, look, man, he goes, I, you know, I never took shit. He goes, you know, it, until I don't know. I don't know how it had ended up with him or he'd end up getting the cream or whatever it was. But he basically yeah. was saying he was the one that brought it to Bud Sealing's attention that Major League Baseball had a steroid problem. And, you know, that yeah, he's tied to it. And that's kind of what's keeping him there. Well, the next guy on this list, Thrill, who is a slam dunk Hall of Famer, one of the best players to ever play the game, is Alex Rodriguez. He's yeah, got, he's got like forty percent. What the fuck do you do with a Rod, man? Because that guy yeah. was that. Hey, he cheated his ass off, start yeah. to finish. Right, right. You know, and that's that's the thing, and that's you know that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, what I mean, but they won't let Barry in the Hall of Fame, not because he's not the best there was, because he is without a shadow of a doubt. They won't let Barry in because Barry was a prick to the. To the freaking media, right? Well, yeah. look at Big Poppy. Big Poppy's an admitted user, admitted, and they let him in because he sucked everybody's ass in Baltimore. Uh, excuse me, in Boston. So you know, I mean, he he, he was Mister Mister Media Darling, and so they freaking let him in, you know. And he's an admitted user. 
So, you know, why God isn't, why Barry, why Clemens, eh, McGuire? I mean, come on, dude. I played with McGuire. Oh, my God. Some of the shots that he hit. The opposing team would come out and watch batting practice just to watch him upper tank shit in St. Louis. Yeah, dude, it, it was it was remarkable. I remember going out and watching Jose Canseco. It was my rookie year in 2000. We were playing the Yankees in the playoffs, and it was one of the most impressive shows that i ever seen in my life. As far as Big Poppy, look, I don't know what he admitted to or not. I, I do know they, they tried to say that that 2003 report uh, came out there definitely was 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 tied to PEDs. Uh, he gets in. I, I just think that beyond Big Poppy, uh, forget it. Like, this goes way back. This goes back to a, a really, really prominent guy who played in the 70s and 80s that is a very well-known uh, steroid user. And, well, then you take into account all those years, you know, technically – it, they had no testing until 2003. So if you're a writer, like, you know, where do you cross that line? Because the problem with A-Rod or the problem with uh, Manny Ramirez is that they were, they were, they were, they were guilty of performance enhancing drugs well after 2003. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as Bonds is concerned and Clemens, I just, I, I got to believe that, when you have the best hitter of our generation and the best pitcher of our generation, seven Cy Young Awards, and you keep those fucking guys out, and yet you're letting guys that you can make an argument like one way or another if they should even be in with their numbers, and then you're letting them in when, wait, hold on a second, they did the same shit? Well, uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah, and and that's that's what I don't get, you know? And that's why... That's why, you know, I am a big proponent of they need to change uh, the voting format, you know, because, I mean, th these media guys, it, it's ridiculous. They hold grudges and everything else, so they can, they can kiss my ass for all I care because, you know, I mean, they, hey, a lot of people don't like getting called out. Even though you're a dick, you got called out because you're a dick, and that shit happens, so. Battle. Hey, uh, we were talking about we talked about the Giants, and I was just looking through this this little article right here on the computer. Um, Flores was high man on a totem pole last year with twenty three homers, and the Giants have not had a third homer guy since Barry Bonds did it in two thousand four. I mean, you're going on twenty years of not having a thirty homer dude. That's a problem. You think? I mean, I played from 80, 86 to 93 with the Giants. And besides myself, Matt Williams, Kevin Mitchell, Barry Bonds, and who there was there was one other guy. We we all had 30 homers in that, you know, eight, nine year span. And Dude, I mean, you know, you start stacking up 30 homers and like Boogie Bear did. He had 47 and 120 something. And, you know, uh Barry had 40 something and 120 something. Matt had 30 something and one something. You know, I had I had 35 and 91, and then next year I had 29 and 116. So, you know, i mean, you start jacking the ball out of the ballpark, and especially hitting with Runners in scoring position. I'm not talking about solo shots. That's bullshit. You anybody can hit a solo shot. It takes skill to hit the two run, three run homers. And uh, you know, all of a sudden when you start doing that, you start racking up RBIs. So for me personally, uh, we need we need some smackers. And you know, here's another one. You know, you were talking about you know some of uh, Blake Snell being out there. As far as as far as offense goes, as far as somebody who wants to smack the ball. I mean, Bellinger's out there. Uh, Hoskins is out there. J.D. Martinez. Um, you know, Chapman. Chapman's another guy who's done it in the past. So, you know, there there's still some options available for the Giants if they decide to take it. You ready for this, Thrill? I'm going to go over the MLB home run leaders from last season. Matt Olson at 54. 
Kyle Schwarber at 47, Pete Alonso 46, Shohei Otani 44, Ronald Acuna Jr. 41, Marcelo Zuna 40, Mookie Betts 39. Count how many Dodgers and Braves are on this fucking list. Like yeah, Dodgers, no shit. Christina, 39, Luis Robert Jr. 38, Aaron Judge 37, Austin Riley 37, Max Muncy another Dodger 36, Jorge Soler 36, Juan Soto. 35, Jake Berger, 34, Ozzy Albies, 33, Rafael Devers, 33, J.D. Martinez, another Dodger, 33, Corey Seager, it's the Texas Ranger, former Dodger, 33, Christian Walker, Diamondbacks, 33, Julio Rodriguez, 32, Jordan Alvarez, 31, Francisco Lador, 31, Isaac Paredes, 31, Spencer Torkelson, my dude from ASU, my brother from another mother, 31, Manny Machado, 30, Kyle Raleigh, 30, Brent Rooker from the fucking A's had 30. Holy shit. Yeah. Bobby Witt Jr. with 30. There's all the guys with 30 home runs last year. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I get it. I get it. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, and by the way, Josh, uh, I didn't play with Kent. So you can you can X him off the group. I was talking about guys I played with. Um, but anyway, so you know, for me personally, you know, guys in the middle of the order get paid to smack. Okay, and somebody even said it earlier. Somebody said it in the chat about, you know, how they would switch the lineups around all the time. And, you know, this guy never hit, you know, in the same spot. And he'd hit over here and he'd hit five and then he'd hit two and then he'd hit seven. Look, you you hit in the middle of the order. You're paid to do two things. You're paid to bop the ball and you're paid to drive in runs. That's what Al Rosen told me. I took it to heart. Everybody who played under Al Rosen, they knew the system. You you had a job you had to do in that spot in the lineup, and you went from there. It's just not it, – it's – well, I don't say it's not like that anymore. I mean, it, dude, the ever-changing lineups have become a thing, and I don't know why they become a thing, but, but they are. And you've got guys that – uh, move all over the place for whatever reason. I don't know if they go for matchups or whatever it is. You have a lefty right a, a lineup. You have a righty lineup. And typically, you know, then you you try to ride the guy that is hot. They've now, most teams or a lot of teams have taken what they consider their best hitter and they hit him second as opposed to third. I, I don't agree with that. I, I think that your best hitter still should hit third. The reason being is that you got two on base guys ahead of them. You want that guy getting up in the first inning with somebody fucking on. Here's a great shot for it. If you're the second guy, if the leadoff guy doesn't get on, now you're a leadoff guy. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Well, and, and that's that's what that's what you know, like Dusty told me. Dusty said, you know, you know, I mean, well, I mean, I had Roger Craig for the, my first part of my career, but you know, Dusty told me, he says, I'm I'm putting you third. He says, You ain't moving. He said, I a best hitter in the third spot. And then he he even and and he did it purposely, but he put me three, Matt four, and Barry five. And he told me, he said, if you guys do your job, Barry's gonna drive in all the runs. And it was like clockwork. Whoever, whoever hits in the five slot, if you got two guys that get on in the one, two slots, whoever hits in the five slot is gonna have some RBIs. I mean, I shit, I drove in 123 in Texas hitting in the five slot. So, I mean, it's an RBI spot. So, Amo's got a good point, and I could understand this because you do have to take a look at where a guy is comfortable and where the numbers say he's comfortable because Ronald Acuna Jr. has not been good when they put him in the three-hole. So, he's been the leadoff guy. He loves leading off. He likes jumping on the early fastballs, and that was me. I, I did. Now, statistically, if you go back and look, my best numbers were out of the two-hole. Yeah. Which make, it makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. But if you were to ask me where I would prefer to hit, I would have told you that leadoff was my favorite. Hey, hey, look, I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Guys have preferences. And that, for me personally, is something that, you know, should be talked about in a clubhouse, should be talked about with the manager, should be talked about with the hit instructor, because guys are going to perform better when they are comfortable in one spot of the order or another, you know, and for me personally, when you jump around the batting order, all right, let's say I'm hitting two one time and I'm hitting five and then I'm hitting seven. It's like, 
hell, I don't know what my job is. All I'm supposed to do is just get up there and hit. You know, it's like, no. When I was in the three spot, I knew that there were sometimes I had to drive the run in. There were other times that I had to do my job to move the runners over to get Matt and Barry or Kevin Mitchell or whoever it was RBI opportunities. That was that was the way it was, and I was I was okay to do it. That was no problem at all, you know. And you know, for me personally, I like and you and I have talked about this, and I don't know why it is a myth. All right, when the when the ball leaves the pitcher's hand, he's got no more control over the son of a pitch. It's done. All right, it becomes your job. And it doesn't matter whether it's a left-hander or a right-hander. And you and I talked about this. When I was scuffling, I actually wanted to see a left-hander because my mechanics were better. And so now you got guys who are labeled, you know, as non-left-handed hitting hitters or non-right-handed hitting hitters. Well, how the shit you think they got to the major leagues? They had to hit those guys down in the minor leagues. How the hell do you think they did it? You know? And that's that's bullshit. It is bullshit with all these statistical fucking morons that say, oh, he can't do it. Well, the reason he can't do it is because you're not giving him a shot. That's why, you fucking idiot. Dude, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I mean, right here in the chat, our guy Marty says, repetition breeds perfection. You Whoa. gotta have the reps. And if they have Whoa. the talent, give them the reps. Hey, look. Look, and I told you, I told you, you know, we had left-handed, and we still do till this day. We had left-handed hitting bad pitchers, and we had right-handed uh, pitching batting practitioners. Well, guess what? If I'm scuffling against a right-hander, I'm going to face a right-hander all the time. If I'm scuffling against a left-hander, I'm going to scuffle against a left-hander, but I'm going to hit off of him till I get this shit right. And, and this, 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 you know, Oh, he can't hit left-handers. He can't hit right-handers. He's in the major leagues. He had to go through all the minor leagues to get to the major leagues. He had to hit them sometimes. Well, you know, one of the guys that we always talk about when it comes to the lefty-righty thing is Jock Peterson. And for a long time, the Dodgers never gave Jock an opportunity to hit against lefties. And then he went on to struggle against lefties for the most part of his career. Well, part of that is just the fact that he never fucking faced them. Boom. And then and then there was there's there's been uh some times too where Lamont Wade hasn't faced left handers. And I know for a fact Lamont Wade can hit lefties. I know for a fact. Yeah. Uh thrill, real quick. Uh let's not forget our title sponsor, Bet yes. Online. NFL yes. Playoff. Read up your thingamabob you gotta read off. The NFL playoffs are here. The NBA season's in full swing. Bet online has you covered with all the up-to-date second odds, news, and scores. The additional odds, lines, and trends and info on desktop and mobile are available to you. You can access the world's best wagering information anywhere, anytime. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember, to use the promo code BLEAV, capital B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts for all you degenerate motherfuckers. That's oh, right. Look at that cash. Where are all your hundies at? Eric, that is entourage. Make Do your ready, betting baby. at Bet Online. For Eric, just because he read the shit out of that thing. Oh, thrill. All right, man. Hey, good show, dude. I got to run. I got. I, I was supposed to be down for dinner at 7. I promised the family. We're now hey. at 719. Yeah, uh, hey, awesome. look, you know, I'm awesome. sorry we had technical issues down here with the cold weather and all that sort of shit, but uh, thanks for sticking with me, and thanks, everybody, in the, in the chat room for sticking with us. You guys are awesome in the chat room. Welcome to uh, – all of our newbies, uh, Marty and uh, Victoria and Andy, and thanks for jumping in there, Andy, Jason. Uh, good seeing you in there. And uh, look, I uh, I got to find out about next week. I'll, I'll text you and let you know. Okay, we got the Hall of Fame announcement next Tuesday, so we'll have a lot of 
fresh info. We'll figure out who's in, who's out. Uh, so right. regardless, I'll be back at, at, you know, at some point for the deuces wild show. And then, yeah, just let me, let me know if you're able to do it. If, if, dude, if you have to push it, if we have to do it on a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday, that's, uh, that's always possible too. So I'll keep everyone updated. Yep. Yep. No. Um, Hey, look, dude, this is, this is a really good show. We got a chance to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, new guys, Dusty coming on board, uh, Ray, Ray. You know, uh, hit Jordan Hicks. So, you know, we got a chance to cover a lot of stuff. Uh, after this, we'll uh, we'll see what happens, what develops in the next week or so, and uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, hopefully we get my new boy, uh, my new BFF, Blake Snell, on board. Don't oh, yeah. Instagram, Blake, give it up. Give us some props. We've been giving you props. Absolutely, man. All right, Thrill. Have a great week, dude. We'll see you, uh, see you next week, hopefully. You got it. Hey, everyone in the chat. Shut up!